Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Every aircraft manufacturer finds ways to compete with each other where possible. On a global scale, the competition gets none bigger than with the two leading plane makers of Airbus and Boeing, who are consistently finding ways to one-up each other, outdo the previously announced aircraft and attract more customers than ever before. However, a pretty fascinating spin on this competition is that without one or the other, it is very easy for the manufacturer to potentially become complacent. While many will pit the two together, and rightfully so, the reality also is that the two plane makers need each other just as much, and so do airlines. Regarding the wide body scene, the two have fought for countless decades as we firmly enter now the next era that'll only continue. At Boeing, we know they're progressing with their 777X. While remaining uncertified, it has much left to prove, and a customer Customer base that could do with some growth. Still though, it is an alternative to many of the quad engine planes that are dying out. And when looking at Airbus, their high capacity and longer length A350 variant, yes, the A350-1000, is available. But how does this plane stack up and what does it truly offer customers? On February 24th, 2017, the A350-1000 took to the skies for the first time. Labelled by many as a marvel of flight, those onlookers were wowed at its extended length. The A350-1000 has a length of some 74 metres, this being up from the 67 of the base-900. It can comfortably seat 350 to 410 passengers in a three-class layout. However, depending on how the respective operator can figures their own plane, this can grow or decrease. Its additional capacity makes it an excellent choice for carriers looking for more seats on, say, high-density routes. Equipped with ULR operations of up to 8,700 nautical miles, its connectivity has made it an optimal plane of choice for many airlines right around the world. Airbus says that the ability to connect towards emerging markets has been hugely influential in selling the type. This could be, say, utilising the aircraft on segments such as Shanghai to Boston or Paris to Santiago, while equally the A350-1000 has a place on high-profile routes such as Manchester to Los Angeles, Dubai to Melbourne, and where applicable with the respective airline needing to purchase the plane, but these routes do give us a scope for what the aircraft is truly capable of doing. The launch of the A350-1000 and general A350 series came about out, thanks to a pretty big shift in the landscape of aircraft that were required by customers, something I've studied many, many times now on the channel, and you could argue came directly after the onslaught of the final push to really prove that the quad-edged 747 or A380 was the future of the industry. We all know how that ended up playing out. The Dash 1000 is part of a broader A350 series and includes the Dash 900, which, as I mentioned, acts as a base. However, it is the high-capacity option that, similar to the 787 series and most produced aircraft, is not the most favourable type with airlines. Most will say prefer the Dash 900, believing this is the more than adequate type for their respective missions. And this doesn't mean inherently that the larger variant is a bad aircraft. But for the customers that have ordered and fly the larger aircraft, well, they really need a business case that will make it work. Notably, the A350-1000 thus far has 78 in-service aircraft, which is spread across multiple airlines. It also still has an order backlog exceeding 100 units. Some of the largest companies around the world have committed to the type. It includes Air India, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Etihad, Japan Airlines, Qantas, Lufthansa, Qatar, and Virgin Atlantic. This certainly doesn't have as many other carriers with the type on order, but it does have Philippine Airlines and a handful others. The true testament to the Dash 1000, and I think what it can actually offer, is highlighted with Qantas, where the Dash 1000 is being specially built for the Australian flag carrier and configured to their needs and requirements. That need and requirement being in the form of Project Sunrise, where, where this aircraft will be capable of operating 20 plus 
plus hour nonstop journeys to basically every single corner of the globe, which is very exciting. But still, reflecting on the total amount of orders and also aircraft in service, it is largely a lot less than the base standard version. This can also be seen with the 787 series, the Dash 9 being incredibly popular, and the Dash 10, yes, still having a presence within the industry, but certainly nothing like the two other variants. Why an airline might order the A350-1000 is another important factor to consider. Ultimately, wide bodies will never quite reach the heights of narrow body jets when taking a look at total order counts. That doesn't come as a shock, so therefore selecting the right wide body is all the more important for companies. One must look at just a few factors as why the A350-1000 has enjoyed success. Notably already, the A350 does have a strong presence globally, and while the Dash 1000 has close to 80 in-service aircraft, the Dash 900 has 453 that are operated worldwide, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a major international city that won't have an A350 flying through it. Thanks to its introduction in the 2010s for fleet commonality purposes, adding the Dash 1000 can be a pretty attractive option for routes that do demand such a fleet type. Take a look at what has been ongoing at Delta. They're an airline that flies the A350-900, and there are very much continued calls for the airline to purchase the Dash 1000. Many believe it would be the perfect alternative, and some sources close to the company have informed me that the airline is exploring this aircraft. But see, the 777X is not a bad aircraft by any means. But to remember one thing is that the A350 is also a clean sheet. It was, at the time, a completely new entry for Airbus into the market whereas the 777X is an advanced development on an existing base. The 777X will succeed according to many, but those operating the 777, well, many of their units are still relatively young. Pair that with the late entry into service of the 777X, we're still many years away from it, which will in the end actually occur 10 years after the first A350. Well, these are all fundamental factors to consider. The 777X many will pair against the A350, but it is hard when the 777X is not flying with customers. Many airlines have options, many airlines have explored this wide body, but they'll just want the plane to enter service first before they make any key decisions. Efficiency is another very important factor to consider. While all planes are efficient nowadays, purchasing a plane is more than just understanding the plane's base parameters. Through research, the companies will need to determine what route the jet can be deployed on at an ideal capacity level. Crew, food and fuel and all the inner workings that come with that, whether that be slot restrictions, airport fees and so much more. This all and many more are all things I'll need to take into account before a plane can even be ordered. And for many carriers, as I mentioned, that already have the A350, they may just want to stick with fleet commonality as they'll see overall savings present there. That is going to conclude today's video on the A350-1000. Many call it the 777X competitor, but I'd love to know your opinion. Is the 777X the answer to the A350 series, considering the 777X will enter far later? Does this mean that the 777X has a better chance for the long term to outlive the 350? Or do you believe the 10-year head start that the A350 series is going to be very valuable? Let me know down below in the comments, and thank you very much for the support. I do greatly appreciate it. Take care and be safe and I'll see you next time.